As up the hill with labouring steps we tread, where the twin clumps their sheltering branches spread, the summit gained at ease reclining stay, and all around the widespread scene survey. Point out each object and instructive tell the various changes that the land befell. Where the low bank the country wide surrounds, that ancient earthwork formed old Mercia's bounds. In misty distance see the furrow heave, there lies forgotten lonely Gwichelm's grave. Around this hill the ruthless Danes entrenched, and these fair plains with gory slaughter drenched. While at our feet, where stands the stately tower, in days gone by uprose the Roman power. And yonder there, where Thames' smooth waters glide, in later years appeared monastic pride. Within that field, where lies the grazing herd, huge walls were found, some coffins disinterred. Such in the course of time, the wreck which fate, an awful doom await the earthly great. This poem, written by a 19th century blacksmith, is unusual in that its author didn't choose the printed page, but the bark of a living tree on Castle Hill, Whittenham Clumps. Joseph Tubb of Warborough carved the poem over two weeks in the 1840s. Gwichelm, whose grave is mentioned in the poem, was an Anglo-Saxon king of the Gewiss, a people in the Upper Thames area who later created the Kingdom of Wessex. He is usually counted among the kings of Wessex. Quichelm is first mentioned in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle for 614. This year, Sinaglis and Quichelm fought at Beendon and slew 2,046 of the Welsh. Quichelm fought King Pender at Sirencester. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle records, This year, 636, King Quichelm was baptised at Dorchester and died the same year. This picture is from the Fig 2 YouTube channel. Sadly, the poem tree died in the 1990s. On visiting the clumps in May 1986, I found the poem almost certainly on the alignment of the three clumps. Whittenham Clump, Castle Hill, Iron Age or Neolithic, and Brightwell Barrow, which also aligns with Long Whittenham Church and a small church near Sandley. The three clumps are in visual alignment. A time team excavation found considerable settlement from Neolithic, Bronze Age, Iron Age and Roman times in the area below the clumps. The Brightwell Barrow Visiting St Mary's Church, Long Whitnam, this was found to be of great interest. Fragments of cinerary urns had shown it to be a place of pre-Christian sanctity. And also there was a carving of a dragon on the chancel arch. If the lay goes through the centre of the church, it goes at an angle to pass through the 12th century font, and also an unusual piscina in the vestry, formerly a chapel, which contains the smallest monumental carving in England, of a knight. Travelling from here to the nearby town of Dorchester-on-Thames, an even more exciting find was made. Exhibits in the museum indicated that it must have been an important centre in Neolithic times, for it had a henge and cursus system very similar to the one at Stonehenge. It even had a wood henge in a similar position to the one in Wiltshire, in the cursus alignment. Unfortunately, the monuments are now gone. In 1938, they were seen only as crop marks, and now gravel extraction has destroyed even this. But the important thing is, the site is known. There seem to be some interesting alignments going through the Big Rings Henge site. One has too few sites to be called a lay, but the churches of Long Whitnam and this one at Drayton St Leonard align with the Henge and are about equidistant. A more spectacular line is the one which passes through Dorchester Abbey, the Big Rings, a causewayed ring ditch on the Cursus, Windmill Hill, a church by a holy well in Oxford and two cross tracks further north. A further line passes through the multi-junction at Berwick Salome, the Woodhenge on the Cursus, the Big Rings, a church in Abingdon and one in Tubney, and this wood on Harrow Down Hill. Another lay was found by Lawrence Main of the Network of Lay Hunters and seems to pass through sites associated with Sir Winston Churchill. This goes through a crossroads in Enstone, then through Blenheim Palace where Sir Winston Churchill was born, 
After passing through Ditchley Gate and long stretches of coincident track in the grounds and the Column of Victory and the Grand Bridge, it then goes through St Martin's Bladen, where Churchill was buried, and skirts the western edge of Round Castle on Bladen Heath. Then it passes through St Thomas's Church near Oxford Station, the Lake Street Centre, and the site of a wood henge on the Big Rings Cursus near Dorchester on Thames. The lay passes centrally through Blenheim Palace at right angles to it and along the path that can be seen behind it. It then goes through Bladen Church where Sir Winston Churchill was buried. The old St Martin's Church of Bladen on the same site was probably built in the 11th or 12th century but demolished in 1802. After skirting the edge of Round Castle, a small hill fort near Bladen, the Lake Street lay centre. It comes to the 12th century church of St Thomas the Martyr, Oxford. It then continues to pass through the wood henge that was on the Neolithic Cursus adjacent to the Big Rings Henge at Dorchester on Thames. These monuments are no longer there as much of the area has been destroyed by gravel extraction. The big rings were found as crop marks in aerial pictures in 1927. They seem to have a similar relationship to their cursus as Stonehenge with its cursus, or the hypothetical Negan stones at Staines with the Heathrow Airport cursus.